Good morning, and thank you for joining us for today's webinar. The topic this morning is going to be the Department of Financial Services continuing education subject requirements. My name is Steve Testa. I'm the current president of Suffolk Big Eye. Today's webinar is being presented by the Big Eye of New York. Before I introduce our two speakers, I would like to cover a few housekeeping topics. Today's webinar is being recorded. We will be able to share a link with you after the event is complete. We welcome you to revisit the content yourself and share it with your colleagues. We also invite your comments and questions. Please look at the Q&A chat box on your screen. If you have, or if you have a question or think of something for the speakers at any point, just type it in there and we'll hold it for the discussion portion at the end of the event. Today's presenters are Christine Neat. She's the AVP of Member Engagement and Susan Keegan, who has her Associate in Claims and MBA, and she is the Learning and Development Manager. At this time, I'm gonna hand the floor over to Susan Keegan, who's going to start today's presentation. Sue, it's all yours. Good morning, everyone. So I know this is a real hot topic based on the phone calls and emails I get every day. I know everybody is wondering what's going on with uh, new CE requirements uh, that the DFS has uh, put together for us. So um, I have a list of questions um, that I thought I would just go through, kind of keep it casual. And then if anyone has any questions, we can touch base on those too. So the first question was, what licenses does this affect? So it uh, affects your broker, your producer license, your life and health, all, all the licenses. Uh, this affects one way or the other. So the new license requirements, they have come up with um, some areas that they believe uh, the DFS need to be covered uh, by taking at least one credit. So they would like everyone to have a credit in diversity, inclusion, and elimination of bias. Uh, they would like everyone to have a credit in ethics, uh, laws and regulations, flood, and then there is also an enhanced flood requirement that I will go into later. But the basic four are the laws, regs, ethics, flood, and diversity. Who needs at least three hours of enhanced flood instruction? So if you are selling flood through the NFIP, you need those three hours of enhanced flood instruction. Uh, so this goes into effect for any licenses that renew after April 1st, 2022. I wanna mention, um, cause this is huge, I think, some clarification that we got from the DFS. If you, okay, first of all, you can renew your license 180 days out from your renewal date. So we are January 27th, so, you can renew, if you have a license renewing, and I think it'll be in June at this point, it's kind of a sliding calendar. If you have a June renewal date and you have the 15 credits already, you can renew your license without worrying about getting those new additional four credits that they want you to have. You won't have to worry about those until 2022. So that's kind of, um, I think a lot of people maybe didn't know about that. We didn't even know about that until we got some clarification from the DFS. So that's been super helpful to so many people um, who are kind of panicking because getting the classes approved with the DFS is taking a little bit longer than we had anticipated. I filed at least, I think, 15 classes and we're still waiting for confirmation from them as to what they're gonna qualify. So when I filed a class, for example, if I filed an ethics class, I said, can you please approve this class for the one ethics CE requirement. And I think they're still trying to figure out how to keep track of it on their end. So they haven't approved anything specifically for the, the new credit lines. I hope that makes sense. Um, the last question on here is if a broker holds both PNC and life and health licenses, can the four courses count toward both licenses? Will they be considered a bridge course? So life and health does not need flood. So if you're a life and health licensee, you don't have to worry about having taking a flood class. That is only for licensed PNC and brokers. As far as courses, um, as I mentioned, we've got so many courses filed. 
um, just waiting for them to like tell us that they're good to go. And then we will update our website and generate a whole bunch of emails so everybody knows they can um, get onto our calendar and schedule the classes. So how do I know um, if I currently take a class, say currently I, you know, I take the diversity and inclusion class this year, am I going to take the same class? And I thought the CE credits, how does that, how does that work? Can I take the same class with Big Eye New York or? So if you took this diversity and inclusion class this year, this renewal period, this license renewal period, mm -hmm. you cannot take the same class twice. Uh, and the way the DFS tracks it is by class number. So every class has a number, N, Y, C, R, and then a series of numbers. What we will do is refile the class, add some updated content. So you can take the class again in the next renewal period because it'll have a new number. So um, I have to pay attention to the NYCR number when I'm signing up from, you know, from the previous years. And then what people could do is, is we have that if they take their courses through us, we have an electronic file cabinet, which they keep all their certificates in. And that goes back years and years. So somebody could actually go in and see what the certificate number was from the previous year and do that. Correct. Okay. Like a kind of a good example is, um, I don't know if, um, I feel like a bunch of you have probably attended our yearly ENO uh, program. So we refile it every year. So you can take it in 2020, you can take it in 2022, because it's always going to have a new uh, NYCR number. Same like the NYAIP. Same thing. Yep, we refile right. that every uh, certification period as well. Great. And then, um, say, for example, I, I know that we have these four mandatory credits that we have to take now. But, you know, I kind of like to take some other courses that like interest me, you know, that would help me with my job. Is there going to be just something that where I could just take those? Is there going to be like some kind of package that you're going to that we're going to offer to to just address those four credits? That yes, are we actually now? we're actually filming part of it today. Um, the course itself has been submitted to the DFS just waiting for them to sign off on it. We're in the middle of filming the actual webinar now. So it'll um, cover, it's a, it'll be a four hour webinar. It'll cover all the bases. Oh, okay. And what happens if I want to do the whole thing in one sweep and get everything all done? Is there an option that I can do that? So we do have a 15 in one program. So we actually retired one uh, because we, we're going to have a new one coming up this year, but that one's still again, pending with the DFS. So I'm bringing the old one out of retirement, which will work well for anybody that can get their uh, credits done by April 1st with a later date on their renewal. You can do this 15 in one program and renew your license. If anybody has any questions on it, um, feel free to call me or send me an email. I'd be happy to explain it for you, but I'll give you the long story short. 11 of the credits um, is a self-study with an exam. Like, don't be afraid of the word exam. I feel like that the word haunts me ever since school, but it's not a it's not a difficult test at all. I managed to pass it, so I feel pretty confident that anybody can pass it. And then the remaining four credits, a four hour webinar. And I think the dates we picked are February 17th and March 15th. So if you are interested at all in that program, you know, like I said, just reach out to me. I'd be happy to tell you about it. And then we are going to have a new one for 2022 coming soon. <laughs> so, Sue, we got a couple of questions coming yep. in. Um, does does everyone licensed within an agency, if licensed, have to take flood? Yes, but not the enhanced flood. Not the enhanced, not the additional Correct. three. Just that the would be one, only if they were going to be selling that. That's through the directly. NFIP. Yeah, yep. the, I'll actually give you the wording. Um, at least one hour of flood insurance instruction if the licensee is licensed to sell one or more lines of property casualty insurance. Great. And then what does this have any effect at all on anybody that has a non-resident New York State license? Boy, that is a good question. And I will have to do a little research. So if you could get me that person's name, I'll do some research and maybe I'll just send it to Steve, maybe if you wanna share it with your members. I, I think what we could probably do is, is after this webinar is done, 
what we can do is, is we're going to send everybody out a link. We're going to encourage you to share it with people within your agency. We're also going to encourage you to share it to maybe, you know, other people that are in the insurance industry. That would be a great thing. So we can answer that question as well. Absolutely. So we have another question. It says, if you've already taken CE for renewal, have renewal license in hand for May of 22, and you take flood before the renewal of the license before May of 2022, can it apply to the 2024 license? So you have to wait for your actual renewal date to pass. So um, if this person is renewing now before April 1st, April 1st with a May actual May renewal date, they have to wait until after their date to take that class or it won't count. Gotcha. So we have another question here, um, which I think I can answer. It said, so if my a license renews in June of 2022, you know, can I renew prior to 4122 without taking the additional courses? And the answer to that is yes. yes. If you haven't finished your CE yet, like Sue said, we're going to be offering a 15 in one course that you can do now. You can get it done. There's a, uh, you take a self-study course for 11 credits, correct, Sue? Correct. And then you do, then you, there's a, a, a webinar for, for additional credits on top of that. So um there's just that. make sure you get your renewal done before April 1st. Like you go into the system and you do it. Oh, that's the key thing is that yes. we want it no matter what the date is. So if I, if I have a September date, I want to make sure that I go in and renew it before 4-1. Right. And so it's like a rolling calendar, right? So here we are on January 27th. Yeah. You can do it all the way up till March, right? So that'll get you to a date in September. So you kind of just have to do the math on the calendar to figure out when you can get your license renewed because again you can do it 180 days out great um and then it said will the 15 in one course include the four hours of enhanced flood the old one no oh no actually none uh, no. none of them will neither of them will but we we do have a course um the course itself has been approved we're just waiting for them to approve it for the enhanced flood credits um so we'll be getting that on the calendar Okay. And somebody just asked, and uh, I said, is the updated 15 in one um, course available right now? No. Coming soon. And that, and the reason for that is because we're, our filing is in the DFS and we're waiting for the DFS to actually approve them. Correct. And um, so I think we've answered this question, but let me just make sure. It says, if you sell flood, then you need to have the four hour enhanced flood. This counts towards the required one CE of flood, correct? So if you sell flood through the NFIP, that's when you have to take the three enhanced flood credits. So, and I'll just, I'm gonna read this actually for you from the document from the DFS. At least one hour of flood insurance instruction if the licensee is licensed to sell one or more lines of property casualty insurance and at least three hours of enhanced flood insurance instruction if the licensee sells flood insurance through the NFIP. Okay. Um, here's one and it says, if the agency license renews in 2022, but the broker license renews in 2023, do we need to wait until 2023 to take those courses? I think we might need a little bit of clarification on that from the state. That's one of the items that we had sent a question to for the state that we're looking for an answer on yes. still, correct? Sue? Correct. But I will get it and um, we can provide that. Send us an email, I'll make sure it's included. Oh, somebody is an overachiever here. I have 26 <laughs> credits I got last year through Big Eye New York courses I took. Would these credits count towards the renewal of my license? So I'd you like know to know like a little bit more information, like when the, the um, renewal date is. Yep. So I have the person's name here and we okay. can get, we could get back to you specifically. But great I'm going question. to say yes, but I just want to actually look at the dates for a definitive yes well i gotta say personally i am like i'm like blown away somebody's taking 26 credits way to go um and then is selling right risk flood the same as selling nfip flood no 
Like I, I was talking to Tim Dodge here and I guess there's like, there's never any harm if you're selling flood insurance to know more about it by taking the three enhanced flood credits because you, it would count towards your 15, but you're not required to. Great. I think I covered everybody here. If I missed anything, please let me know or if you've got some more questions that are coming in. Um, as we're waiting for some more questions to come in, there's going to be an additional information that will be coming from Big Eye Suffolk. And every Monday, we send out an Ed News. So I encourage everybody on here, you know, if you can, Sue does a great job on the Ed News that she sends out every Monday. There's going to be updated information that's on there. Um, we'll also you supply everybody here when the courses all come through for approval, if you'd like to take those courses. And we would encourage you to go to BigEyeSuffolk.org for additional information, as well as going to our BigEyeNY.org website. And if you have any questions, please feel free to always reach out to Sue, reach out to our, myself. We, uh, on once a month, we are going to be having, we're going to try to keep them between 15 minutes you know, in a half an hour to do a webinar to bring some important issues to you. So, you know, we'd like you to join us each month with some of these issues. And more importantly, we'd love to hear from everybody. So at the end, there's actually a question, there's actually like a, a little survey. It's only three questions, I think maybe four. You know, if you could just fill it out and say, hey, this is what I want to know about, you know, and we can we can put something together. Um, while you're looking, Christine, one other thing I wanted to mention that we're, we're starting um, in February, we're calling it Ethics Friday. It'll be the last Friday of every month with the exception of November, December because of the holiday dates, but we'll have three one hour ethics courses um, available if you wanna knock out that ethics portion. And also Christine, I was thinking that maybe you can give me a list of all of the questions and I can answer them in writing and so when you send out an email it'll be captured that way as well that is wonderful that is great okay christine we just have somebody at the very bottom can you please repeat the answer on the renewal prior to april 1st their license renews july 22nd just kind of oh. go over that 180 day sliding scale sure so we are at january 27th so january february march april may june so july so <clears throat> you should be able to renew today if you have a july 27th renewal date based on the old the old now right. we are if you haven't taken any of your ce right now at this point you can do our 15 and one that we're going to be offering. So you can do the course again, and you can take that course as long as you take that course and renew your license prior to April 1st. Everything has to be done prior to April 1st, because then after April 1st, yeah. if you're taking a course, then that's going to count towards the new one. Even, But if your license renews in September and you've done it before April 1st, you're good to go. Yes. Um, I have a 9122 renewal, have all of my CE done. Can I renew prior to 41? Absolutely. So yes. if you think about it, you're going to be probably getting something six months out. So in March, March. you'll be getting an email inviting you to renew your license. So somebody, great question that... Uh, yeah, you can't do it right now, but you can do it in March just because of the 180 day like sliding calendar. So somebody says right now I have no credits and my license renews in June. This 15 and one credit will meet all the requirements as long as you Correct. take it prior to and you renew your license prior to 4 one. Correct. Does anyone have any more questions? If you do, don't hesitate to um, send me an email or call. You shall. Well, thank you guys, everybody, for your time today. We really look forward to seeing you next month. Uh, Jean, I think you have a couple of things that you just want to, uh, you know, just wrap up with, you know, that we will be sending an email out and we'll have the recording available. Right. As soon as the recording is available, we're going to post it on our YouTube channel. We do actually have one of those um, and you can search for it at Big Eye Suffolk. 
Um, the next meeting is planned for February 24th, I believe. And we're gonna do the same format. We're gonna start promptly at 10 a.m. We're trying to be mindful of everybody's time so that you can get the information you need. And then at least you meet the people who can answer the questions afterwards if anything comes up. So um, we have a couple that say, how do I sign up for the 15 in one? As soon as we have it, um, I have this list of everybody who has signed up and participated. We can send you that information directly when it's available. So, um, and please feel free to reach out anytime with questions either to Big Eye Suffolk or Big Eye New York. And you can visit BigEyeNY.org. Up at the top, there is an education button. You can click on the education button and it will show the classes. And again, when you get an email from us on Mondays, you know, um, for the education, I definitely, um, you know, encourage you to open that up because there's going to be information in there as well. 